It's another week and it's another day of LCO. We're kicking off week number three. It's going to be our fifth day of the LCO. I got Skimmy with me as usual, but this time around, Fido joining us. Fido, how are you? Oh, great. So excited to be back. It's a privilege. <laughs> Yeah, we had you last one as well. Now we've got you for a couple more days. We've got you for a little bit longer this round. Um, and Skim, how are you excited to be having a third casting partner already? I know, they're, they're, they're really putting me on my toes, making sure that I can, <laughs> um, you know, do do great work with another co-caster. Look, Fido was a natural last time, so I'm excited to, to, to share the, the commentary booth with him once again. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what information he's going to bring. But first, let's have a look at last week. Let's have a look at the, the two best of twos that we've closed out week number two with. Out goes that hostile Tago there, and in the encore, it's AoE ultimates galore. Now down in the auto, knock him up, bring him down, it crashed him up in the air as he gets dragged across the wall, taken him down the assistance of that turret, and Kanga has just been wiped. Fast approach for 40 minutes, but it's going be up. As that fight does, in every break on out, but the critical guard has been broken. Very early on, and as it drops down the piercing arrow to kill, no! Yes, back sleep! We thought the hill fight was enough, but no, the paddle damage from afar was there to get it done. In jumps Thomas Dino, ripping back in Texas. He flashes, he dashes, but he does not stop off. Yeah, give me a 4v5, because he's got no TP, he's got all that movement speed for having the package boost running as quick as he can. Then he falls on down first of all. Tien leaps in, gets shoved on back. Ronald finds that kill, but now here comes Gizle, packaging into three. He can do so much damage, look at that! He's taken up so many with the assistance of Leaners. Look how quickly it's been driven on down, it's the TP a little bit too late there, it's the pressure fighter. He's got TP the top. As in comes Ryoma, the fight's going to be a 3v5. The Baron's on the way of Grand Prix, showing fight to choose. But in goes Pfeiffer. He's got the cataclysm on the entire enemy team. It's surely he's clicking. Rip back the Fivers King, find the position. He's already burnt the flash. So the Fivers are a little bit awkward, but they get the job done. It's that last dance, that final breath, that one chance to try and defend it all, but it's not going to land heads for them. They've been ace inside their own base. Raku, yes, give us the pose. Well, Moku is back. He's absolutely mocked the competition here tonight. A lot of highs, a lot of lows that we had in that second day of week number two, and it does leave our standings looking a little bit like this. Ion, that uh, dark horse, a little bit of surprise. We tied him first with Antic and Team Bliss, both getting two two O's for themselves. Ground Zero and Fury having a 1 2 0, -oh, but also losing one. It means they have three points. And unfortunately, our last three remaining teams, Diewolds, Mammoth, and Kanga, yet to pick up even one point, one game for themselves, Skip. That's right, Nat. Yeah, it's been a pretty rough affair for those bottom three teams yet to pick up a single point. They've not really found their mojo there, the sort of like fighting spirit in these uh, initial weeks as to a brand new patch and a new season. Uh, and I guess, as you say, at the top of the table, Iron have to be the biggest surprise of it all. Um, they've had a, a fairly uh, nice strength of schedule. The, the, sort of the road to versing the big four, if you will, has definitely been on their side. But look, we're, we're all behind it. If they can win today, they've definitely got some momentum on their side. And we get to see is there more than the likes of Antic, Bliss and um, Grand Zero really chasing for the title. Yeah, it is quite a close race up the top there, but Fido, we're going to have a look at your power rankings because I want to see how close you are. Whilst it is only two weeks down for that leaderboard, I want to see how close you are and where some of your predictions are. So you're there fourth uh, on the on the list, so walk me through what some of your predictions have been and, and why you've gone for the inverse of Eye on there. Well, that's right, Nat. I mean, I made my predictions with the heart, not with the brain, because there's two <laughs> people very dear to me on uh, Ground Zero. That's, of course, ex-teammates Lemus and Bemvi. Um, and I'd really love to see them win, win a title because of how much work they've put in. They've also got Synergy playing together on Kanga, playing together on Bliss, uh, now on Ground Zero. Um, they also have a shared passion for midwaves. Lemus loves dying midway on midwaves. He loves securing <laughs> mid prior with his life. And then uh, Bemvi investigates those pesky bushes. Um, so I think they've, they've really got everything. Um, yeah. They've really got everything to succeed, yeah, yeah. And then if you look at the jungle, we've got Shermfire, who's an actual monk in-game and outside <laughs> the game. Um, he does martial arts, and in-game he plays the most disciplined League of Legends uh, you can get, you know, macro, focus, control. Um, and we saw a pretty poor showing out of Tien, but I reckon he'll be able to, um, he'll be able to run it back. Yeah. And Kisei, of course, star in the mid lane. So that's, for me, that's the number one team in the league. I mean, when you hype it up that much, now I'm kind of questioning why I put them in, in fourth. I also did the, I did a mix of mine, but 
Fido, I know you're going to tell me the truth. I know you're going to give it to me straight, okay? Did you guys actually collude about the fourth and sixth position here? How do all four of you, including Tally, Max, Skim, have the, the same team there? Oh, I guess we're, I mean, I guess we're all wrong, right? Because uh, <laughs> it's not looking good. Ion definitely stepping it up. Um, I think it was just the player names that we got kind of baited by, but obviously oh. the preparation is, is paying off for, for Ion. Yeah, well, let's see what Ion are going to play today then and see if we're going to get any closer to our power rankings there to see our predictions when it comes to the regular split. Ion are going to be going up against Kanga, so a team with two two O's for themselves up against a team with no two O's just yet. That is going to be the start of our day. And then to end out our day, to have our second best of two, it's Mammoth against Fury. So Fury, I think, Skim, really looking to solidify themselves in that second series against Mammoth. That they absolutely are. Yeah, Chip had a phenomenal series in that one. He uh, showcased uh, an MVP stand-up performance on that Silas thing where the Nar ultimately getting the massive three-man stun. Um, in the Nar, or as the Nar rather, into the sort of the Baron wall, wins it off that one alone. Um, I think, yeah, definitely... Uh, a, a quiet player when we had their interviews. A little bit nervous at times, but certainly in, in, in the game itself, um, a completely different beast. So I'm really excited to see if Fury can, you know, get one more um, road to sort of upping their own playoffs journey. As for Mammoth, mm -hmm. they'd be their second week now with their full roster, so looking to try and find a bit of momentum on their side too. Yeah, that's true. They could just be a roster that's a, a little bit slower to start, but we won't jump too much yet into our predictions for the upcoming series or too much about the roster specifically because this is going to be the last week that we're playing on the 14.1b patch. And so this is the last chance, Fido, that we're really going to see of having the double support item. And I know that you really wanted to talk about this. You wanted to explain more on what it accomplishes and how it really works out for some of these teams. Yeah, well, simply put, it's just uh, very good gold value. Not not quite 86,661 gold value, but uh, you do pay 400. You got a thousand bucks back in the quest, um, and then you get a little bit of gold regeneration um, per 10 seconds. So you get about 350. Uh, so you definitely get your money's worth. Uh, you get some wards down as well, so you get to uh, have two two ward items. And uh, the key, the crucial part about it, is that the support should be the one farming the cannons and the melees, because the gold that the support gets of the minions goes to the AD carry and vice versa. Um, and and the, the, the most tricky thing is that you cannot poke to use the stacks. Because if you use the stacks to poke, you can't actually use the stacks on minions, and the stacks that you last the minions with don't count towards the, the gold cap. So basically, you don't really reach the penalty um, very quickly if you do this correctly. So it's, it's a really good option. Just generate more gold. It's overpowered. And I think we'll see the top teams using this more, um, more than the bottom teams, because it, is, it does take a little bit of practice. So what happens if both bot lanes go for the double support items? Like, what can we expect for a bot lane to play out like then, Fido? Well, if they if they do it before the first base, it'll be a very big snooze fest because it doesn't <laughs> give you much, um, doesn't give you any uh, offensive items, right? So yeah. I think most of the time, AD will start with Doran's Blade and Sup will start with the support item just so the AD can actually trade and, and have some pressure in the first couple of waves. Um, but uh, yeah, look, I think if, if both bot lanes do it, then they're smart because this is the best strategy in the game on this patch and you're a pro player, you got to abuse it. Yeah, and there's some uh, item upgrade options as well there, Skim. So when you look at those upgrades, are there any specific champions that ring a bell where you're like, this is even more broken on, or it's just across the board going to be really beneficial for everyone? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Seraphine and Senna have been our go-to bot lane pairing to try and really abuse this one. Senna in particular yeah. clicks up the, the Blood Song. Um, very much a champion akin to like an Ezreal, where sort of new items always break that champion and make them relevant again. So um, not only are you passively scaling up as a Senna with your soul stacks from trading and, and picking up those... Um, um, uh, minions, but also then suddenly you've got yourself a, a fairly DPS oriented item that is a support one that can drop those walls, as Fido mentioned. So I think Bloodsong has to be probably the most OP one, but I think, yes, yeah, Senna Seraphine, we've seen Sonas, um, any kind of variation of that. It's all about the sort of enchanters bolstering some kind of like pseudo AD carry that can be a support at the same time. Um, and especially like the double support bot lane, if you have like a really strong mid game bruiser, like a Zin or an Olaf or something along those lines. Uh, Mid-game team fights come around, you get that one item spike, um, you're just, you're winning every single fight that takes place in the map. It's really, really strong. Yeah, you, you mentioned that Seraphine as well, and it rings um, a lot of bells in my mind to yesterday, uh, sorry, not yesterday, last week, the matches that we saw there. Maybe that's uh, just this patch that she's been all, you know, picked up and had a look at, but we've played on two different patches now, Skim, and I mm. know that you love stats, you love talking about champions. Yes. So let's have a look at some of the LCO champions that have been around for both of these patches over the last few weeks. Yeah, well, you look at Ash, for example, 100% presence has retained that through every single game. Um, but we've only seen two games of the champion played. Now, overall, in the entire world, everyone's sort of clocked on very easily that 
are insanely broken. Very, very strong for the poke. Her Rast double sir. Double range bot lanes, for instance, like a Varus Ash, you just automatically win lane. And we saw what Bliss did that with uh, Liam S and Ben V together. Um, you just out harass the lane, you can ban out their champions, force them into, say, like an Aphilios matchup. They can't really do too much about it. Um, Zen also in a similar sort of vein, very aggressive. Obviously, the items have certainly helped in that regard as well. You get the Titanic Hydra, perhaps the Sundered Sky second. One, two item spike again, incredibly strong. You're a tank, but also so much damage comes on through that you can be uh, very aggressive, like a lot of the jungles have been. Level three, diving bot lane, for instance. Level six, you're looking to try and take as many of those void grubs, dragons, whatever it may, may be uh, as possible to try and say, I'm strong, let's force a fight. Jarvan is sort of the, the outlier. I'm sure Fighter will want to yeah. touch on a little bit more. <laughs> Um, really high presence in Oceana, not the highest overall. It's always been one of those champions that kind of flourishes down under because we like to fight a fair bit. Jarvan is fantastic at that. A champion that is built to team fights. Doesn't really matter too much what your KDA is. It can be 0-5 or you can do what Swiper did, be that uh, be that KDA. Still land a pentakill ultimate and just win the game. So insanely strong, but if you're more meticulous, more well-drilled, um, I guess just better, flat out for lack of a better term. Um, mm. The other regions are picking different champions to try and get that point across. Um, do you know any of the other champions off the top of your head, fight, or do you want to explore a little bit more about why this Jarvan is just so much more predominant in LCO? Yeah, I think Jarvan's a little bit of a bait pick. I, I've been <laughs> always a Jarvan enthusiast, uh, well-renowned <laughs> for my Jarvan gameplay, but even I haven't been playing him because the items just don't suit him. And that's the problem right now, where Xin Zhao kind of grabs uh, Titanic Hydra and suddenly he farms faster than Graves, faster than any champ in the game, and you've got a 12 CS per minute Xin Zhao. You know, it's ganking you every 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 two minutes, every clear. It's very it's very obnoxious to play. Whereas Jarvan sort of, uh, you saw in that game where Swiper played it, he actually went down I think 100 CS against Xin Zhao, and that's just natural. That's the matchup. That's that's what the items do for the champion. So with Jarvan, it feels like there's a lot more pressure uh, to get stuff done early because you just can't keep up um, in the farm game. Do you know off the top of your head, Skim, the win rate difference between the Xin Zhao, Xin Zhao, Zhao and Jarvan? Uh, Zin is at 75 and Jarvan's at 100. So all three games that Jarvan's played, he's won. And then Zin has just, yeah, as you see, 100% presence. He's in as many games as possible. He's got eight games played. I think, I think Zin is actually, yeah, the most played champion wow. in the entire league. So yeah, the win rate is going to fall down a little bit, but 75% over eight is still, um, yeah, pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, look, there's, there's still great stats, don't get me wrong, but if falls even more fighter into that, you know, Jarvan really look more like a, a bait pick if you're cherry picking some stats as well, <laughs> if you feel like that that's exactly what you need to be able to get the team fight across. But you guys, I have loved what we've talked about in this pre-show. I've, I've enjoyed knowing more about the support items as well as some of the champions we can expect to see. But for now, we got to head to a break because we want to jump into our first series. So right after the break, when we come back, it is going to be that best of two between Ion and Kenga.
stop watch, it's carnage! They're all charged at his command! Oh, the boom! It's do all die! Now is when we get to get into the nitty gritty of these two teams. It is Ion up against Kanga for our first best of two. So let's start off with Ion because, Fighter, we have coined them the Dark Horse. And I think today is going to be, at least this week, right, um, is going to be a really big solidifier for them to see if they're like, able to stand up um, to the likes of Kanga. And this is going to be something that, you know, you're undefeated so far. How do you face the pressure when you're this roster? Well, it's, it's very difficult, especially when uh, Twitch chat hypes them up so much. We've got so many copy pastas about them, so, so much energy being sent. And I reckon that's actually the deciding factor in their success. It's the Twitch viewers that we have to thank for, for Iron being at the top. <laughs> um, and of course, it's that man uh, on the right there, Nebula, uh, putting up a really good performance on the Lucian. Multiple games, kind of popping the damage charts. So nothing, nothing else to say, just 1v9 performance from him. Yeah, uh, when we came into the first week, Skim, Hexplash was talking about, like, you know, I might have to carry Nebula a little bit. It's his first game. There might be some nerves there. And then we talked to Nebula last week. He had absolutely none of those. So it's an amazing performance in the first two weeks for this roster. Absolutely. I mean, we talk about it at the start of um, uh, start of the show, just sort of the success story of this team. None of us saw it coming. None of us actually put it in our uh, power rankings. None of us really sort of expected too much from them. But as a bot lane pairing in particular, they've... They've definitely answered the call and said we're not going to be afraid of the nameplates, not really afraid of the draft. I think Nebula and Hexlash as a combination are just second to none at the moment. I hope it really shines and we can get a, a, like a more accurate understanding of where they really place and rank amongst all mm -hmm. the bot lanes. Um, once they go up against Bliss, because I think we're looking at some of the stats for Hexlash in particular, he's got like a 30.5 KDA, which is like, what, two deaths across all the games played so far. Um, to do that as a support, pretty impressive, pretty good. Yeah, that is really phenomenal. And then now begs the question, how is this Kanga roster going to stand up to the likes of Ion? Because Kanga, it was very easy to explain them as a team full of past subs and debutantes, right? Some of the names might be familiar because you've seen them play a couple of games in the LCO before, but they've never actually really been on that starting roster. And as an org fighter that I'm sure you're familiar with, how excited are you to see them hopefully get at least one win on the board today? I'm very excited to see uh, Ryu Faker play. Big fan of him. And his <laughs> last name is quite literally best. Um, so he's got to live up to that. And uh, I thought that the top laner had a great performance um, against Tian. We saw Wudon get multiple solo kills uh, in a difficult matchup. And uh, they've had big gold leads, but they've kind of squandered them. So I'm hoping that we see a little bit of a redemption arc from them today. And what are some of your thoughts, Kim, for this, especially in that top lane matchup? Maybe how Doraemon and Wudun are going to be going up against each other? Yeah, I'm actually expecting a slightly volatile matchup up there, given the fact that uh, Wudun has been quite keen to entertain those 1v1s. He's certainly been a pretty proficient Jax and has had that denied away from him. But at the same time, Doraemon has had his Gragas band away. That's how um, strong he's been on the bruises, right? He's got a really high damage percentage for uh, a top lane, and Doraemon is looking to try and showcase that, yeah, top laners can carry it as well. So I'm expecting a few fireworks up there. Uh, I think okay. for Kanga, it's a case of looking to try and figure out um, how to be a little bit more confident with your leads. We looked at Invictus on the Graves, very, very strong, got a few kills, but didn't really push much of that further ahead to try and get themselves a, a draw against Fury. Likewise, you look at the bot lane for like Rila and Kurak. Rila obviously busted out the um, Callista, which is really, really strong as well, got ahead in lane. But yeah, mid game came around and sort of like um, fumbled the lead a little bit, wasn't able to you know, capitalize on it too much. So hopefully we get to see a lot of those unique picks again. But yeah, mid game, late game comes around. Um, there's a little bit more certainty and uh, conviction behind, yeah, we're strong. Let's make something happen now. Well, let's see if uh, either of these teams are going to be more solid on their playstyle. We can actually ask them because we do have Doraemon joining us for our first interview here. Doraemon, uh, you got massive fans in the Twitch chat, first of all. Everyone's always constantly asking for your interviews, so I just got to give you the floor. Anything to say for all those big Twitch chat fans that are watching right now? Um, thanks for supporting us. We won't let you down <laughs> today. We'll, we'll two zero these guys. I, I love it. I'm sure they're enjoying those big words as well. I want to ask from your point of view, how are you enjoying top lane at the moment in this uh, hotfix patch? And are you excited to move on to the next one already? Or is there something in your pocket that you're hoping to bring out? Um, top lane is just the same as usual. It's just <laughs> Kisante duty every game. It's pretty, pretty boring, honestly. I think it's the same old. All right, same old, same old. Uh, but how is it in the team, the vibes? You guys are undefeated now. Is there that extra pressure or is this more of a motivator where you're like, let's keep this undefeated streak going? Um, yeah, I think the vibes 
are good. No one's, everyone's ego is still in check. Um, but okay. we're definitely more confident. We're definitely more confident in beating some of the top teams now. I like to hear it. Skim, is there anything you want to ask Doramon? Yeah, kind of leading on from your point there. Um, obviously, going into a season, a lot of players say, look, you know, we want to do really well. We want to go for playoffs or we want to win it all. You know, very generic responses in that. But are you almost a little bit caught off guard yourself by how successful your first few, uh, few weeks of gameplay have been? Uh, not really. I, I feel like it's going as expected. Um, everyone's just everyone's just doing their part in on game day. Uh, yeah, I think everyone's just doing the job. It's yeah, smooth sailing. Awesome. Do Do you guys feel that you've been tested yet, Thorimon, or do you think that's still to come in the LCO? Um, I think next week against. Uh, Team Bliss, my brother, and uh, I'm gonna gonna <laughs> teach him a few lessons. Oh, yeah. oh! Hyvin is up for next week already, and we haven't even started this best of two. But uh, very quickly, Fido, do you have a question for Doramon? Yeah, my, w w we've seen you playing. Uh, you know, the Gragas is the tanks of the top lane a lot. Um, my question, I guess, is when are you gonna draw the line for your coach? When are you gonna put the foot down and say, "Look, pick me a carry. Pick me first. Pick me Fiora." When's it gonna happen? When are we gonna see you on your your one v nine champs? Uh, hopefully, that's gonna be today. You know, we've been we've been cooking in scrims with some new picks, and I hope our coach will let let us make it spicy. <laughs> hey, look, awesome. we're, we're hoping for that as well. Dormon, thank you so much for joining us and good luck today. Thanks. All right, how spicy. much confidence, Fado, do you actually have that there's going to be a spicy pick? Um, well, I, I think, you know, that's this is sort of, if they treat Kanga as a team worse than them, which is what it sounds like, they're coming mm -hmm. in expecting to win, uh, then this is definitely the time to, to try out a different style, see if it works. Um, yeah, it could be this game for sure. Yeah. Um, is there much that you feel they could change up for Ion, or have you seen quite a lot of versatility? Let's exclude that, that top lane, right? Because you've obviously talked about you'd like to see him more on a carry champ. Uh, but outside of that, have you seen a lot of versatility from Ion? Are you like hoping maybe we can see more from them that this might be the week to try and experiment so then when we get to that Bliss matchup, they aren't being pigeonholed? Well, uh, Hexflash has played two games of Milio, I think, right? And two games of Nami. Mm -hmm. um, and those are both Lucian champs. So we'll see, you know, he, he was always a notorious Nautilus player. Maybe they'll uh, play Engage, even though it's not a it's not a, a meta pick necessarily. But I, I'd love to see him on, on something different, even, you know, just, just anything different. Anything that's not Nami Milio, because it's a very similar play style. We'll see if he if he has it on other champs as well. Is that like you just beeline it? You just have to ban those comfort champs then out of... Um... Ion's pool, or then you worried about what meta might get let through, or do they actually overlap? And a lot of comfort for Ion right now is also meta. I think you just need to slap slap down the uh, the Lucian ban, mm -hmm. and that sort of <laughs> cancels out the, the Nami one. and yeah, Nami and Milia two for one. You know, I'll take that's a good deal. So hopefully the the coach for Kanga sees that as well. Yeah, I mean we could even ask one of their players about that because we do have our second interview ready right now. We have Wudon joining us here, uh, so let's get him in. Wudon, hello, how are you feeling for this matchup in week number three of LCO? Oh, uh, because it's week three, I think most of our players, um, they lost the nerf, so we're just, I'm really excited to see what, show what you guys um, can see today. Yeah, would you describe the Kanga roster as a team that's maybe a little bit slow to start, and that's why you've had a little bit of a, a rough beginning to LCL, and where you guys are only going to get better? Um, yeah, I think we were just um, nervous about our picks in the first few weeks. I think now that it's week three, we kind of shown like uh, we kind of seen like oh, well, this doesn't work. What well, the other teams like to play this? I think we kind of like we're kind of set on what we're gonna play. So yeah, I think from this week mm -hmm. we'll start to perform. Was it um, a little bit of a you know? Obviously, it's sad last week that you guys weren't able to get that uh, one game win from Fury. But do you think that loss has helped you be more solid in these picks as well? Be more. Um, uh, confident in your playstyle? Yeah, I think in my opinion, those both of those games, we had a really big advantage in the early game. It's just that we weren't able to like stick to our identity. We kind of um, ended up playing as like individuals. Like I remember I had a bad performance in game one, so we kind of set, settled down on that and I think we are more of a team now. I love to hear that. Skimmy, uh, you got a question? Well, I kind of just answered the question I had. Um 
just then Sorry. before, right? In terms of like game one, Relo was really far ahead on the Callista. Game two, obviously Invictus was really far ahead on the Graves and sort of weren't able to close it out. You, you talk about it being very much like a like a solo queue mentality, trying to play on your own terms. What are some like quick fixes that you can try and um, I suppose attribute to to, to come into week three feeling a little bit better about that? Um, yeah, like I said, we definitely had like uh, like a big advantage in both of those games. And after reviewing with like our coaches and our staff, it was actually like a really easy fix. We just had to move around like in the, into the correct um, spaces on the map, just the lane assignments. We had to do it properly, which we didn't. So we couldn't really expand the goal lead. But I think now we have that down on down on control, down under control, and we're confident against Ion. Yeah, so it is. Nice. And then uh, fight it yourself. Yeah, I guess who's um who's sort of the most vocal on the team? Who's making the calls, calling the shots? Because there's not too much um, veterancy or experience out of outside of uh, Rio Fury. So who would you say is kind of leading the team right now? Oh, uh, I think just by the, like the champs we like to play. I think Carter, he's like, um, he likes to play his carry champion. So I think Carter, he's definitely improved his um shot calling and his like macro and like controlling other players around him. So yeah, I think Carter, um, Invictus is gonna really be crucial today. Awesome. Cool. Well, Udon, thank you so much for all the information and uh, thank you for joining us. Good luck today. Thank you. See ya. I'm glad he clarified because I was like, who's Carter? And then I was like, wait, are we yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was are like, like, Carter? Some like copy past them. like, yeah, he's called Carter. We're like, we're close like that. It's like, you relax, mate. Relax. Who we oh, it's Invictus. Okay, sweet. Yeah, it is nice. It's always tough because sometimes there's players where you're like, oh, everyone actually does kind of know their first names. And then other times <laughs> you have to be like, oh, they might not know who I'm talking about. Uh, so some good clarification there. And they also touched on the exact same point you did as well, Skim, about that mid to late part for them. So I'm hoping, Kanga, they come in with some more confidence. It might be a t bit tough. But the side select coming out from both teams at the blue side, we saw this last week. Week one was like the only anomaly. We knew yeah. that people were going to try and figure out, you know, is, is blue side busted, is red side busted? And it's pretty solid now, blue side. So we're going to see that swap up. Ion getting their first pick in blue side, and then Kenga getting the blue side for themselves, Fido. Yeah, um, uh, I think blue side will, will suit them better. We saw them using red side uh, pretty poorly last time. If I remember, it was... Uh... Wukong last pick in one of the games, so maybe that was that was Mammoth, maybe. But yeah, I, I haven't I haven't been too impressed with with people's use of red side. So I reckon blue side securing an early pick, maybe an Ash, maybe a Zin Zhao. Um, I mean, there's lots of options, even like a Zia for Rhea Fury, something something powerful will uh, give them the best chance to win. Do you think seeing the side select changes your personal predictions at all, um, Fighter? Uh, my predictions are one one. I think that uh, <laughs> we'll get a banger game. Um, and hopefully it goes back and forth again. Big leads, big throws, dragon for, I mean, elder for base. I love those. We love yeah, those. Yeah, that, that law is good. I mean, if that's one thing that we can uh, bargain on, it's definitely going to be that, <laughs> that King are going to provide the bangers. But don't forget to have your say at Twitch chat. Make sure you let us know who you think is going to be taking game one. You can put in uh, your vote. You can have that say in the Twitch predictions up over in that corner. I always forget that it's mirrored. I have to put this way. point in the wrong the wrong direction, but it is over there. Yes. So make sure you put those points in. Make sure you let us know. We had some really close ones. That Antic Ground Zero series last week, mm -hmm. 49, 51%. Let's see if we can have another series to you that might be that 50, 50%. But we can talk about our predictions a little bit more. You've already said, Fido, you're going at 1-1. One, one. You think there is back and forth. You think Kenga have learned their lessons. Skim, you're with me. You think, <laughs> ain't no way. I well, am just way too strong right now. You talk now about teams learning lessons. I think I myself personally have learned a lesson, which is <laughs> yeah. we don't ever have draws in the LCO. All we do is 2 O's. 2 O's, 2 O's, 2 O's. Every single game last week, I was like, yeah, 1-1, one, one, this looks close on paper. Then it mm -hmm. just straight stomps. So I think if the universe is true and it's unfair, which we know it is, then <laughs> we're going to get a bunch of draws today just because Fido's here. I'm going to be made to look like an idiot and then I don't know what to predict anymore. It's always that way. We're like, surely week two will provide that <laughs> split. Surely week two will be the one when teams are learning things. But yeah, you know, we'll see if it's going to be the, the LCO. It's not really a curse, right? But yeah. more environment of two O's or if it is going to be that one one. Do you want to explain any more, Fido, even though you already did a little bit about why you truly think it's going to be that one one, despite Kenga not having a win yet? I think it's also like a mentality thing. Uh, generally in esports, like if you if you uh, have two teams that will be like roughly the same before the season starts, and then one team's 4-0 and the other team's 0-4, like the 4-0 team is less invested in winning because they're like, oh, if we drop a game, it's all good. Like we're still 5-0. Like we're still having a good game. We're just testing things out, you know. Whereas the 0-4 team is like, 
you know, we need to we need to get a win now, guys. Otherwise, we're just the, the worst team in the league. So I think it's like motivational thing. Um, that's 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 gonna make this one one more likely. Yeah, I, and it, I mean, it also rings true, right? Because we had Doraemon in the interview and he's talking about maybe I get that carry champ for myself. Maybe we do have a little bit of a pocket pick that could come out. So they try something new. That could be something that lends uh, to be a game loss for themselves. But we're going to see exactly if that pocket pick is going to come out. We'll see if Doraemon was lying to us or if we're going to have some spicy drafts because game number one draft is ready. Awesome, Nat. Well, let's jump into this one in Fido and see how this week starts off with Iron on the left-hand side. Instantly, they say, you know what, Rila? And you know what, Woodon? Those two champions that we've highlighted, not allowed to be played. As for Kanga, though, right on your uh, prediction there, Fido, is the fact that Lucian, gone. Yeah, yeah, Lucian is gone. So that's that's going to be interesting to see what Iron go with the bot lane. Um, in the bot lane, so Iron choosing to ban Zin Zhao on blue side. Not interested in first picking it. Uh, we'll see what they go for, but... A very bot lane uh, fake, um, focus ban phase from Kanga. Seraphine is still open with the uh, with the support item. Definitely strong. Senna has been banned, but there's still other options. You can go Seraphine, Sona. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of picks you can go with it. They go with the Rumble first pick. This yeah. is uh, a bit risky. It is a little bit uh, risky. We saw certainly Tien get punished by this, going uh, one and six in lane, um, figured that it was going to be enough to try and take down uh, Zoranus's Udyr. But I think obviously Doraemon has been showing that. Uh, Look, you give me a chance to play these AP champions, and they will become ban worthy. Even that of the Gregus, as we mentioned before, the uh, Ash makes obviously a lot of sense. All these champions that have these high win rates or absurdly uh, strong presences are the ones being taken off the board. You mentioned Seraphine. I think this is only one of the bot lanes that have yet to play it on the side of Ion. So it'd be curious if they were to try and flex into it. But for Kanga's side, it's like, well, Varus is up and available. We would be um, pretty amiss to not pick up this one for free. Yeah, Varus definitely a strong, just a safe AD carry on the patch. Has a CC ability, has great scaling, you know, consistent laner, just a sort of jack of all trades. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Kanga go for Rengar because this champion is not banned and it is Invictus's best champion. And I'm confident that, you know, if, if you really want to have the best chance to succeed, you should put your, your players on, on comfort when, when you got your backs against the wall. They Absolutely. go with Renata. Yeah, well, no, they go for the Renata. They go for the bot lane pairing of we just want on hit damage. That's going to absolutely rip through anybody, no matter how tanky you make your roster. As for Ion, instant lock in on the Skana. <laughs> I get baited <laughs> no. and think, no, surely not. You're surely not. It has to be a Maokai. Oh, this is uh, this is very risky, Malka here, because this looks like I'm not sure if that's locked in yet. But if they do lock it in, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a a god Silas angle for Rhea Fury. He's got Rumble and Malkai all. Uh, it's very very strong here on R3. Uh, looks like Jovi with a blind Yon uh, makes sense. AD mid with uh, AP jungle. They've got a great mix damage on Ion, and uh, it is a good matchup to the Silas as well. It is, yeah, and I'm actually really excited to see him on the Yone again because we showed that um, he's quite keen to play these melee champions in the mid lane to try and break up the, uh, I suppose, the, the meta, quote, quote, of just locking a control mage and Bob's your uncle. So it's going to be exciting to see. The size actually not to go for the Silas, instead going for the Nico, which we're starting to see um, globally pop up a little bit more. Oh, and then it, and it, oh, and it's back again. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like <laughs> the Nico. That makes sense. Nico, great sort of anti melee champ. Um, She's great at disengaging, great at engaging. You've got a Renata for the save as well. Uh, Nico is gone. Okay, it's back. Nice. Uh, yeah, we've got the Zyaban. Looks like they're targeting bot lane. Bot hasn't been picked for Ion. But we'll see what they sort of decide to opt for. Maybe maybe they'll commit to full dive. They have Malka Yon. I quite like it. I think it'd be a good way to um, really, yeah, push, push the banner of we're going to go in, right? Because you've got the double AP top sides. Um, which, I mean, we're seeing a lot of the time now, it's a single AP source. Um, even if it were just like, you know, a Leandri's Maokai in the jungle, for instance. But on this occasion, it's, we just want to dive. We're going to ban away the Nocturne ourselves because we've already got our jungle locked in. But we need more ways to try and hit you before you get to ramp up or set up with all of that AoE CC that comes from every single ultimate that Kanga have. Yeah, I think the Nocturne is just a good Nico pairing because it allows you to come from sort of Fog of War. Uh, when the Nocturne all comes out, you get those big Pop Blossoms. That makes sense. An Orn ban, that's interesting. Um, I do expect Kanga to pick uh, Jungle on 4 here and, and save last pick for top lane. So I would prefer to see another another Jungle ban from Ion, but they've decided to go for the Orn. What does that tell us? Oh, the, yep, the Graves, same as last week, locked in for uh, Invictus. Yeah, no uh, Rengar like you were hoping for. And I think this is the question we'd asked ourselves um, also as to, you know, have they turned over a new chapter? Are they going to look to try and draft a little bit more 
um, on on point to you know your Jarvan, your Zins, your your Vise and whatnot. But no, going to stick to their guns and say I'm going to farm them, but can become a bit of a menace. Uh, I can contest 1v1s in the jungle, and hopefully that can translate across, much like Woodon mentioned, into the mid-game where lanes are set up correctly, objectives are being looked at properly, and fights work out in their favor to snowball to victory. Uh, as for Iono, well, you look at the bot lane, and you see, well, there's a reason we're all hyping up the likes of Nebula and Hexflash. Their stats are phenomenal. Five bands, really, considered and banned towards them. They're going to say, you know what, time for a new champion. It's no longer going to be the Lucian Aphilios on repeat. We're going to change it up completely. No enchanters either, as they're currently considering Aurel. But look, it's Hexflash. He's insane at either an army or a Milio, so run it back. <laughs> yeah, they've definitely opted for range with a Jinx Milio, which is a good way to, to play against the short range comp that we see from Kanga. Um, but Jinx is a little bit off theme with Yone. You know, it's not really, Yone kind of wants to dive, Jinx wants to peel. So maybe Yone will be more of a sort of a split push champion this game. Play on the side lane, play the 1-4, and Rumble will be the one that's grouping. What comp are you favoring cool. overall, would you say? Because I, I look at Ease of Execution, and I say, well, I look at Ions, it's a case of drop an ultimate, go forward. Milia's ultimate's obviously going to be fantastic at cleansing all the CC from those first three picks of Kanga. As for them, though, the Cassante last pick comes in quite nicely. Um, yeah, which, which comp would you say you favor from an Ease of Execution standpoint? It usually is the baseline that we run off. Yeah, I think, I think Ion is easier to play because they have a lot of non-committal tools. They have Maokai ult, they have uh, Rumble ult, where they can just chuck it down, look for a pick, get a flash, run away. They've got, obviously, uh, Jinx range that kind of outranges every champ on Kanga. The sore, the sore thumb and the Kanga, uh, and the Kanga drop for me is just Graves. Like, what does Graves do here? Yeah. Like, he, he's, he's outranged by Jinx. He's very susceptible to the Rumble damage, um, to the Maokai ult. And then obviously the Milio kind of counters uh, Nico ult. So I'd say Ion have a pretty big lead in draft here. What would you prefer that Graves to be? Would it have been one of those typical engage uh, options like the Java and like the Vi? Or would you have liked a, a complete pivot into something different? Perhaps, you know, double AP much like uh, Ion have gone for. Just pick Invictus Rango. He's the best Rango on our <laughs> server. Like, just, just let him on your nine. Please, he'll win you a game. But were you convinced with their performance on Rengar last time where it was very much a, a full clear Rengar into a rock up the fight sort of done and dusted by that point, right? I think... It's, it's always one of those interesting points, right, when you bring a lot of those like very solid QS champions into pro play and they don't really mingle or mesh as well as you'd like. I think that's down to the coaching stuff, right? The coach just needs to sit down with the player and say, look, you obviously have played a thousand games more of Rengar than me, so you know what Rengar needs to succeed, you know what Rengar doesn't want to play against, so what should our bands be, what champions do you want, what are the good pairings, like how do we enable you to have a good game, and then you just have to trust that the champion mastery is going to, um, you know, wash away the nerves and the player will execute, as long as you put them in a winning position. Mm, it's a fair point in that, in that regard. Do you think they can get a winning position in this one, in terms of early game, you're expecting them to play fairly stable, get Graves ahead and farm and look to try and contest objectives, and, and by that sort of point you're saying, well we've got all these anti melee engage tools like the Nico, like the um, hostile takeover. Do you think that's sort of their, their, their key to success, like a very stable early game into mid, or would you much rather them go toe-to-toe -to -toe and say, Iron, we know you're going to be very aggressive once level 6 comes around, you're going to be diving us. Um, let's fight fire with fire. Yeah, I think you just have to look at the lanes, and the one that stands out to me is you've got Yone against Nico, and Yone can perfectly, you know, just CS and, and, and stay even and, and play that matchup, but he will not have Pryo, okay? So you have a, a Nico with Pryo, and then you have an aggressive invading jungler with Graves against Maokai. So I would expect Kanga to keep up the pace, play very high tempo, invade, use that mid Pryo to, to get Invictus a large lead in the jungle, and then slow, snowball that into some objectives. Let's see that if they can actually uh, look to try and link up those conditions, as you mentioned. Nico and Graves as their mid jungle pairing into a Yone, as well as a Maokai. So much CC um, on the left hand side, right for Ion to try and guarantee that if the skill shots hit, the person is just simply going to fall on down. Are you expecting top lane um, to be too volatile? Obviously, both uh, a Rumble and a Cassante can certainly trade blows if given an opportunity, but do you think uh, the fireworks are, are most likely going to be seen elsewhere? I guess we'll have to see whether Doraemon uh, is, is uh, cocky enough to take the Ignite. If he takes the Ignite, we might definitely see some uh, some action in the top lane. But like I said, I think Graves is just a bit bit stronger early game. So the 2v2s for for Graves, Cassante might be better than the, the Rumble Maokai top lane, especially because once Cassante buys one Magic Mantle, that counters you know both champions, and that makes him incredibly tanky. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to see what the players decide, what the game plan is. Um, 
There's no, there's no right answer. That's the beautiful thing about League, isn't it, Kimmy? It's, it's, one it's uh, very gray. It really yeah, is. It's, it's not theory, it's perspective, it's in the moment of, yeah, well, I feel like that was the right response. Um, quickly, as we load into the rift here, let's talk about scaling. So obviously it's the uh, favorite term down under, right? You can have this phenomenal early game, you can snowball, you can flip the game at that level one invade, and it may all go pear-shaped from that point onwards. But having a quick glimpse at both comps, do you think there's a certain side, if it were to go late, that will just benefit greatly? Yeah, I think Iona are definitely in the driver's seat just because of the Yon uh, Cassante matchup. I think Yon, once he gets to, you know, three, four items, he definitely can beat Cassante on side. And then you've also got the mid lane Jinx, who outranges Varus, right? So that's easy mid prior. So you've sort of got a, a winning mid lane for Ion late game and a winning side. Let's see then, Philo. Let's load ourselves into the rift here for game at number one. A battle really between opposite thing, uh, opposites attracting in, in the sense that Ion of 4 and 0, Kango and 0 and 4. You said it's motivation for Kango. It certainly should be. And it looks to try and convert that into a level one invade. Nebula actually with the rocket launcher active. This is going to remind the victory. You can plant that wall, but I know exactly what you're doing. And Jovi seen them all walk in. And even he's going to say, well, I'm going to drop you low. Have fun with your jungle clear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a ballsy invade. Really not not, not checking if, if, if they're being watched. Just kind of going in for the ward. And not expecting Maokai to start Red Trinket, which I think is a fair guess. You know, Maokai wants the ward for the invade himself, so... Yeah, just kind of standard play. Both junglers know where each other starts. And uh, we start start the game. We do start the game. Yes. So let's have a look at bot lane in particular. That's where uh, it should most likely show the most signs of action, given that has been um, really the common theme of the LCO so far. It's all been about can you get level two and then can you get the siege to push and the ability for your jungler to then interact as a result. Will we see a level three gank from Florida? It hasn't really been his tendency, but certainly can. If given the opportunity, get quite aggressive in that regard. Has been filling in this very much uh, engaged role with the likes of Jarvan and Vi to his name. And Maokai certainly with the easy engage of an HS Grass can make things, or Twisted Advance rather, uh, certainly can make things happen in that same vein. Yeah, so we there. see Graves is just doing, uh, Graves is doing a top clear down, but Maokai is doing a, a bit of an interesting path. I think this is what uh, some people call the the uh, Void Grubs path, where you kind of do your bot side, uh, do the top side, do just the bot side again, and then run to Void Grubs. So uh, it doesn't make it very efficient on spawning the camps, but it does mean that you sort of arrive at Void Grubs uh, by five minutes, and you can contest them. Um, so we'll definitely see Graves kind of get ahead in the jungle, uh, just from his path alone. Yeah. What, what do you make of Void Grubs as uh, somebody who's been playing the game for a hot minute? Do you think it's been a, a positive change to the game, or do you find it kind of annoying? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, more objectives to fight over is just gives people more reason, you know, to, to do cool outplays. And yeah, it just keeps the game fresh. That's why we love League. That's why it doesn't feel stale like, like a lot of other sports. And because of all the patches, all the changes, I think it's great. But I do think that they're a bit of a bait. I think they're very overvalued because getting that first grub, grub camp, if you uh, sacrifice a lot of camps to do it and you don't secure the, the next spawn, right? And you're just sitting at three grubs, it really doesn't do too much if you just have the three grubs. So you're sort of going for that magic number five um, yeah. if you want to put emphasis on it. Yeah, we've certainly seen that happen a few times where teams have rushed the first one and maybe all in a little bit too hard to try and get the follow-up ones as opposed to maybe just setting up a wave or just getting turret plates instead, which in recent weeks, I think actually uh, last week we saw a prime example of that. The first three went to a certain team, then as a result they said, well, we know that the opposition are going to think we're going to go for that. Let's just get some turret plates instead. Easy gold. And um, as you say, not going to get baited by the allure of what that one could offer. Dorimon, going to keep Wood on in check here. Drop him down low, about 30% as a result of that. Nice, that flame spitter. Wave's going to crash yeah. as a result as well. And he has run the Ignite here, Fighter, right? So he is all in and trying to snowball this lane. If he falls behind, there is no TP to bail him out. Could be a kill, Skimmy, if he decides to go for it. But I think the minion wave dies a little bit too quickly there. But it definitely props to Dorimon. I think the crucial part about these Ignite matchups is to stay healthy as the Ignite champion because it's so easy to try and cheese the kill, trade some health, and the other guy flashes away, TP's back, and suddenly you're low resources, no TP, and you're struggling to win that lane. So I think Dorimon has, uh, you know, he's playing towards the bigger picture, conserving his health, just playing for short pokes, and uh, maintaining prior in that lane. Absolutely, as you saw there. Nice little recall from uh, that of Foreigner. Dodging out that ward that was placed. And Victus is going to rotate up to the top side, but ward's going to spot him taking these Krugs as well. So Dorimon, fully aware of this one. Not going to show any signs that that vision has been planted because he's just still pushing like you would not believe, making sure that he can get a good first base um, and ideally get a nice uh, purchase to come back to this lane and can continue to be as aggressive as this with level 6 not too far away. Yeah, look at the bot lane. That's a huge TS gap. You know, Varus, Renata, Kurok, and Rila just uh, 
putting on quite a show. Tensia's up already. Um, they get the tempo base as well, so uh, I doubt uh, Nebula and uh, Hexflash will be able to crash this wave. Uh, maybe Red Side can pull it. That's huge. And Victor's looking for a mid gank here, but he's playing Graves with no crowd control. Yeah, it's going to be a smoke screen, and that's about it. You're really looking at Reef here. He's finding the moment to try and hit that oh, okay. uh, root. He goes for the flash. Oh. There is the damage. And that is the conviction you need to get yourself on the board and starting off with a Graves that wants to do damage. Yeah, that's a little bit of jitters from Jovi there. He actually W flashes backwards. Just kind of a panic flash and misses his W. And your W gives you a massive shield that's been buffed multiple times. So perhaps if he saved his W there and got a two-man shield, he would have lived. Uh, but not to be. Foreigner, using the opportunity, uh, using uh, the fact that he spotted Graves to do the, the Void Grubs camp, and it's a little bit of a trade, a Dragon for Void Grubs. I'd say that's pretty favorable for Kengo, uh, because the Dragon does give you sort of a guaranteed uh, win condition if you get two of them, whereas the, the Grubs, you know, if you miss a couple, it's not as impactful. Absolutely, you do, do see it on the, uh, the interface there now. You can um, actually got a bit of a track in it shows, so three Grubs going the way of Iron, that was the trade-off between you go for the Dragon, you get the first blood. well, I know exactly where you are and we can look to pick this one up as a result instead. Speaking of those power spikes, uh, Doramon is going to return to lane with level 6 advantage, Sork Boots as well. I mean, if these Harpoons land, uh, there's just no resistance left on Woodon. He could just die on the tower. Yeah, Woodon is just getting crushed in this matchup. Minus 20, that's a big number at 6 minutes. Um, you do expect Cassante to sort of struggle against the Rumble with Ignite especially, but uh, he needs to try and keep that lead to a minimum. Uh, we also see Varus is going for the Lethality build, uh, not the on-hit, which is quite popular at the moment, that uh, Bork, Gwinsu, um, into whatever you want. You can go Jack Show for a bit of tankiness, you can go with Sand, you can really do anything on Varus, but he's gone for the poke build, uh, and it's kind of a solo AP Nico angle, so it's going to be Nico's job to kill the Maokai, kill the Rumble, kill the frontline. Do you think that's uh, perhaps on the fly decision? Because at first glance, you'd say this has to be lethal tempo. Varus is going to do so much work with uh, Renata to back them up and bail them out, right? But in this occasion, you were saying that Jinx probably late game outranges. So this is a constant, uh, or this is a, uh, a conscious decision. We need range. I need to go lethality here. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We've got a dive uh, in the top lane. We certainly do. Out goes the Nature's Grass to start things off with Rumble. Ult comes on top of that one as well. They're going to try and get the first blood, and they do so secure it. Double summon is burnt. Doraemon going to get the kill. Flashing across the wall is thrown, and they're going to try and live as long as he can. Got a collateral damage coming on through and making sure that it is a one for one. Yeah, and crucially, we've still got the TP for Wood on. So he, he's not too fussed about that. That does, you know. Um, and let him just catch most of that wave. But yeah, Invictus kind of saw this teammate there. He saw the dive coming. He definitely saw Maokai walk into that bush. He's doing the Krugs. He sees him in the bush and just continues doing the Krug cap, not going to help out his brother, Invictus. And uh, yeah, just, just a one for one at the end of the day. A little bit of the wave lost, but the kill goes on Graves, which I think Kanji is happy with because Graves is definitely uh, the carry champion for their squad. Certainly the best possible start right for Graves is you get that kill and you can continue to be as aggressive as you want to be. Look at the bot lane, Nebula's well dead. We're we'll going to replay as to what went wrong there because this is a massive difference. That was an arrow that was going absolutely nowhere near Hexlash. He was panicking. He even burnt the summoner heal, expecting that burst to come on through and take him out too. But this is a yeah, massive moment for, for Kango as a whole. Yeah, Masterclass from the KNG bot lane. They've had prior the whole game. They've had the better bases. They've now got a 2v2 solo kill, and most importantly, both sums used from, from Nebula. So on, the, on this next Varasol, that's a very dangerous time to be a Jinx on uh, Summoner's Rift. I would expect Graves to kind of path down this lane and, and abuse that timer. Here we go. What's happened here? So Rila is six. six. Yeah, just flash off. Yeah, yeah just he's six, and, and Milia is not six, and, and Jinx steps up. And I mean, Milia is a great pick into Varus because he can cancel out that, uh, that Varasol, but need level 6 to do it, mate. Yeah, you certainly do. Talk about advantages, but they've certainly found their moment to strike, right? Dragon, three kills. Uh, and, a, and, a, and a case made that early game seems to be one of those strong points, but we've got to really speculate. Can they find a way to make sure that mid game comes around in a pretty convincing fashion? Because the first completed item is there. It is the Yomu's Ghost Blade. Invictus, once again, on this Graves, is an absolute terror with double buffs active and a sweeper to make sure nobody knows exactly where he is. He said to Jovi, your lane is not going to be fun. Yeah, it looks like he's setting up for a mid play here. Look at Reef Fury acting as a minion. <laughs> oh, he's oh, there! Look at so it go! Good. The pop lost him. He's oh. completely outplayed him. Jovi just that. does not know what's happened. No, that was so smart by Reef Fury. He actually he made it look like the clone was running forward and he was running backwards, but it was the other way around. That was really high 
Um, level of execution, level of mastery on Nico. Well played. What a start to this one here. Really upsetting the, the narrative. You saw the uh, fan vote come through. I think it was 79% in favor of uh, Ion taking this one out, believing that they can just go 6-0. and oh, But perhaps this is the day. Perhaps the Phyto Blessing of asking for a 1-1 might be on the cards. Yeah, it's the Kanga buff, you know. Um, but not all is lost, I reckon, for Ion. Uh, they're going to get the six grubs, which is nice. Jinx is getting a solo plate uh, mid. Uh, but the bot tower is in shambles. It's on its last legs. And we'll, we'll see if um, maybe they want to try to play for, for a counterplay top lane. But it's just so hard to kill, to dive Cassante, right, for, uh, for Ion. Yeah, it really is. One of those champions that, uh, even if you commit double ultimates to it, can certainly tank up a storm and allow somebody like the Graves to rock up and and uh, at least trade in, in that regard. You're talking about some of the CS differences. Now, obviously, top lane has been at a 20 deficit for uh, a fairly long while now, but I feel like it's sort of equalized by the fact that both Reef and really have fan advantages in their own. So I don't really think Woodon's going to be too upset that he's down. I think he's okay. I think he's, he's happy with it. And, he, you know, whenever you play weak side top, you see your team winning. You feel like you're doing your job. You know, you're happy to die here and there or drop a few CS because at the end of the day, you're going to see that victory screen in a couple of minutes. Um, We'll see what, what I decide to do, because the thing is, their, their mid bot is quite far behind, so contesting this dragon doesn't seem probable, uh, whereas trading on Cassante also doesn't seem probable, so Ion are just going to sit and watch. You see Maokai is just recalling, they're just giving up the dragon, there's no trades available for them. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, right? And I think the strategy, given that they do have six void grubs to the name, would always be sacrifice as many of these dragons as we can, try and get some seeds, try and get a few more of these plates whilst the timer allows it and then maybe say okay soul point this is the fight we go for perhaps we're on even footing because yeah they're down 1k gold but it isn't like you say it isn't all doom and gloom yes Kanga are strong but Iron have certainly uh, certainly got a point of uh, strength to play around themselves yeah 100% Iron do have uh, the late game uh, in their pockets but it is an ocean soul and you have poke Varus with an ocean soul that is uh a very good combination uh, you keep uh, poking the enemy down and you regen yourself so uh, we'll see We'll see where Iron choose to go from here. I think they need to try and salvage this bot lane, try and relieve the pressure of Jinx, because if this bot tower drops and uh, Varus goes mid, it's going to be the same story. Yes, yeah, certainly will be. It'll be a case of asking them to attend uh, the mid wave, and it won't be too easy, given the fact that Kanga have hit their breakpoint a little bit earlier. Every single person, bar the support, has picked up their first completed item. They're feeling incredibly strong. Want to be quite keen, I'm sure, to invite um, uh, a little bit of a skirmish at, what, only 12 minutes in. Yeah, and, and really good decision from Woodon. He's just skipped the boots and just rushed the item. Look at that. He's down a kill, down 25 CS, and he's ahead in items on Rumble. So he can actually fight him. So that's that's very smart itemization from him. Um, oh, I have to ask you, whilst we're talking about this, okay, I've asked every single person, how do we pronounce this item? I call it the Kainik Rukunen. Rukunen? I always yeah, the Kainik this. Rukun. How do you say it? I, I just I just call it Kainik. I don't try to I don't try to pronounce we, the second. We forget part. about the second word. It doesn't even exist. Yeah, just call it Kainik. Kainik. Look, that works. I'll tell you a funny yeah. story. I watched Freaks like Patch Rundown. Even he didn't pronounce it. He just said, "Oh, we call it the Magic <laughs> Rock." Oh, okay. Well, who who approved the item? Thank yeah, you so move. much, Freak. You've really confused me. Actually, whilst we're talking about our little story time, a bit of a skirmish is going off because mid laners yeah. uh, have gone down. Oh! Well, I got way too excited for a second there. He predicted the flash, and then nothing else happened. So it was just me getting excited for nothing. There you go. Yeah, the the items on you are just a little bit underwhelming. You've got a, a lone uh, a lone dagger, some boots, and a vamp scepter. Uh, not not too much to speak of, but definitely a huge getting that that uh, that Nico flash because without the flash, there's really no way to dodge oh. the Yona abilities. Oh no! Invictus with the invade. Yeah, Invictus jumps across the wall. Oh, uh, Chain of Corruptions doesn't hit, and that could be really punishing for them right now. The Equalizer isn't the best, but out comes the Nature's Grasp, blocking the place for Shoji with the Fate Steel. Stunning free TP a little bit too late, perhaps. He wouldn't come from through. But Refuse got three kills to his name now. He's doing incredibly strong as this Nico. And with the Herald having just spawned, Iron feel like it's game on. Yeah, and it seems like Iron was just one step ahead. The TP came through first um, for Jovi, and he just sacrifices his life to keep the enemy team CC for as long as possible. And it, it just felt like better coordination from Iron there. Have a look in the replay. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll replay have a look in, in the second. replay in a we'll second. See what there we go. So it's a failed invade. And Victor's W is the ground. Then they start panic running away. The first TP comes in. That's Yone. Gets a massive phase steal. Three man alternate. Unfortunately, unable to go back to his uh, to his E. Gets taken down. This is probably best case scenario for Kanga because this could have been a complete wipe. I mean, it really could have. You saw there from Nebula chucking out the. Um 
Uh, the rocket, nice and early. Looking to try and get the execute. Looking to try and get the reset, right, for the mobility to run down multiple members, but only able to find one in the end. They'll be happy, though. They took down Graves. They think this is a core component wow. what makes them so strong. And Jovi, with his dying breath, looking to try and hold him to the tower as long as he can. It's this nice bailout. It means nothing. You get the turret, I get you. This is what I mean about this player. It just makes no sense. You're 1v3, your team is telling you, please back off the tower, give body, <laughs> sweep side body. He just goes in and kills a guy. Uh, how's that possible? I don't know, but he makes it work. And uh, that's a huge tempo swing because uh, KNG invested all their resources bot side and four and up, pulling the trigger on mid tower. Then, not going to be enough to try and take down that tower, but with six stacks with his void grubs ready, it only takes a couple of all attacks here from Nebulo, who is within uh, range to make sure that they do take that one down. So there you have it, mid lane finally open in favor of Ion. Where do they decide to go from here? Do they look to try and assist in the bot lane and find a second one nice and quickly? Or do they perhaps start to do a bit of counter jungling and say, look, you're only, at, what, down a thousand and a bit? It's, it's not enough to feel like you snowballed this game. Yeah, and crucially, there's no TP wards. Uh, there's no TP even available for Rhea Fury. So I think this dragon is, is quite difficult to contest for Kanga because they do rely to, to get on the back line, to get on the Jinx and uh, one shot uh, to win these fights. I suppose their saving grace will be the fact that Kanga have picked up that Scuttler, so it's going to be there a little bit, um, just a little bit longer in terms of uh, being around for when that Dragon does spawn to get a bit of an understanding as to can we make a play around this or not, but without that mid lane tower, without the mid lane control, there's no chance to get into that river. Jovi's now found himself a second in the bot lane, and we've got ourselves an interesting predicament. Yeah, there looks like uh, Kanga will be trying to retake Retake river control, it's a little bit risky. It certainly is. Look at the equalizer, burning them all down low. Out goes the bot, the rocket connects. Not enough to try and get a kill instantly, but they're still looking for it. Nebula hunting for that one into Invictus. Out goes the battle, he just needs to run away. Turn and burn and get that kill. There is that reset. In goes Jovi from a million screens away. And they says, you want to try and take back that control of the river? This dragon was always ours. Yeah, I think... Uh Really, Kanga just needed to accept that without the teleport on, on Nico, without any sort of flank opportunities, the dragon was just too hard to contest. They had to get that top wave pushed out and uh, try to trade the top tower for it, but uh, they didn't, and they paid the price. So they're walking in, I mean, Fog of War, this is perfect to equalize. Have you ever seen a better equalizer? They're next to a wall. Uh, it's just as good as it gets. Maokai ult as well, undodgeable. And uh, yeah, walk away with one kill and a dragon to boot. There you go. Fate sealed. Well, ultimately, wow. you killed the fate of that fight because they flash away. You burn a summoner yep. and you're going to be quite happy with that one. Yep, sure, really does have his up and available very shortly, but I feel like you really are rallying around the re -theory show, right? Farino, only bounty that they have available for them, has had a pretty commanding performance, but you've allowed Shobi to play the split pushing game and try and claw his way back in. Yeah, there seems to be a minion in the bush in the top lane. That's very suspicious. Uh, <laughs> going for a play there, but not to be. Uh, I think I think the biggest thing to look at here is the lane assignments have to be spot on for KNG. KNG cannot allow Cassante to play into Yone because the thing is Cassante has a magic resist item. That's all he's got. So this Yone, even though he's behind, he will he will eat Cassante for breakfast. Uh oh, Here we go. He couldn't count numbers. He didn't realize it doesn't even matter. Free range minions. I see a fourth one. That's a little bit sus. How about a double kill? Easily baited. And uh, I mean, Dorimon is just a goat. He's five and zero, oh, Fido. Yeah, he promised us uh, to pick a carry champion, and he's picked the carry champion, and he certainly is carrying. So, <laughs> props to him there. Yeah, um, not really sure what to do for Kanga now. That, that was their tempo. They're definitely playing the tempo draft. They have lethality champions. They're shorter range. They're going for these trying to pick offs, kind of desperate pick offs on the side lanes. It's not working out. What's the next step? Yeah, it's so disastrous as well, right? Because not only do you get punished by the death timers and the denial of XP and the S, but also those towers are falling on down so, so quickly with six stacks. They just do not exist. Yeah, Dorimon is just saying, well, I'm 5 0. You've tried to have a crack at the mid lane. You've used your most fed member, and even that hasn't been enough. So, for the first time in this game, um, it's actually Iron up taking control of the gold lead. Now they're the ones up by 2k. Yeah, 100%. And Kanga, they do have two dragons, but the problem is when you're behind in tempo like this, how do you ever get another dragon? You know, you're closer to the soul, but if you can never enter, you know, the dragon area, you can't really uh, reach that point. So. We'll see what Kanga do. I mean, they have to kind of stick to the same strategy, really. They have to go for the champions that don't have Flash. That's the only champion is Yon. So really, they have to make a pick on the sideline on Yon uh, to kind of progress this game. I, I don't think they can teamfight at the moment with how fed this Rumble and Malkai are. Two items on each. Yeah, easier said than done for sure, right? The uh, Leandri's into Storm Surge. Eight stacks in the Dark Seal as well. Dorimon will be doing the most damage in the game right now. As for Foreigner, 
He doesn't know. I just need to be a bit of a debuff bot and a bit of a protector, right? Frozen Heart comes out to know that lethality. Hold the phone for two seconds. Jovi taking a 1v1. Actually catches out the clone of Reef Fury. Zaps on back and says, ah, I am going to fall on down and Victor's will be happy about that one. That's for Ion. It's like, well, what can we get accomplished now in a 4v5? Yeah, that's perfect for Kanga. That's exactly what we said. You have to pick off the champion that has no stuns. And Milia always has the ultimate mid lane, so it's, it's a harder target. They go for Yon, they get the pick off, and uh, they Ooh, kind of Baron. delay the game. Baron started for Ion. It's not too fast. This is a little bit exciting here. They're going to force their hands here. We feel strong enough to entertain the 4v5. Equalizer, surely good enough. We've got the cleanse from the Milio. We believe in our mechanics. Out goes the Nature's Grasp. The early TP, is that going to go to waste? It certainly is. The numbers advantage means absolutely nothing. They've literally got a TP for free. Yeah, we'll see if they can get the mid tower. If they can get this mid tower, it's definitely a worthwhile TP, but they're a little bit slow. Oh. Moving back to it. TP's not going to happen. But Jovi's coming in with one of his own right now. Look, we try and find the moment. He has no ultimate. He has no flash. He doesn't really have much, but his body on the line to say, seeing me alone <laughs> was enough to force all five members back. And we've got ourselves an ARAM here, all grouped up in the mid lane. It's Wood on to try and jump in. Reef Fury has flash, and Pop lost him in about 10 seconds, even he across that wall um, with the uh, chickens there is wondering if this is the moment to strike. Ultimately, everyone's going to start to go back to base. Yeah, uh, Jovi decided to donate his TP since he saw Ryu Fury doing the same. Kind of a gentleman's agreement there. Uh, I don't think anything was really going to happen there, right? With, without Alt Yon, if he goes in there, he's kind of a dead man. So, uh, we go back to the stalemate. The game stabilizes. Uh, the game plan for Kanga probably hasn't changed. I think they still have to make a play on the side lane, on the rumble, perhaps getting his bounty, because whilst he does a lot of damage, he's very squishy. No Zonyas, no magic resist. Uh, Kanga, retaking bot side. Enemy bot side vision for this dragon, setting it up. They've got the mid prior at the moment. Let's say they and can Nico. Try into something. That's the, uh, the real question in ask. If they can, let's try and make sure that two becomes four on these dragons. They need to get some mid lane control. So finally, mid lane has been completely destroyed on uh, either end. And the dragon's up in 30 seconds. Yeah, and everybody's got two items except for Jinx um, and Cassante, I suppose. So. Wonder if that changes anything for Kanga. They're running off to Jovi. Yep, there's the uh, Yomu's burnt nice and early. Jovi looking to be the focus. A one man off from the fate. Soon as he jumps in, jumps out, rips back that clone and tries to get a kill, but only into the waiting arms of Wood on and Rila. Re Fury and Victor's burned down so low by Doraemon trying to do it all on his own with the equalizer. And I think that alone, even if it hasn't got the kill, it has denied the dragon. It's bought them more time. And a comp with more range may get four ocean dragons. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it seems like Kanga, they, they get this one kill consistently now, multiple times in a row. They get a pick off, but they can't get anything with it because too many resources used on just the one, just just the Jovi kill alone. So they have to back away. One consistent thing we can see is if you go to the side lane and Jovi's there, he will die. So that's, that's definitely a win condition for Kanga. He doesn't seem to be respecting them. Um, always stepping up a little bit too far. He doesn't have a blue trinket, which is probably, uh, yeah, four red trinkets on, uh, on iron. Um, making the sidelines a little bit unsafe. See what Kang decide to do next. Going for top tower. Seems like a free objective here. They've got the tempo, they've got the earlier reset on Ion. Let's see what they can get accomplished with this bit of tempo. Then they're going to uh, look to try and turn that attention into top lane, find themselves their third turret of the game. So every single adder has now been destroyed. Rilla perhaps Rila. caught out in the mid lane. Four members converging on a spot, but without any kind of uh, shrillies or movement speed boost. Um, unable to try and find that one. Already burnt by Hexplash there. Yeah, looked a little bit scary there. Um, but nothing ended up happening, and Jinx has a bounty. Zero kills Jinx has a bounty, according to Riot Games. So uh, Nebula very strong right now uh, <laughs> for Ion. Let's see then. What do they decide to do? What is their next point of call? Because I feel like for the Lethality Champions, maybe three items, that seems to be the break point when it starts to say you don't really get much stronger than this. I'm sure when the likes of a Rumble and a, uh, a Jinx can really start to take over the game. Two items complete for Nebula on this Jinx so far. Baron is already down to 50% and a TP coming in from Kanga right inside the pit itself. A second time they've forced their hand at the Baron. The second time they've received the Summoner for it. Grok? Looks like a bit of a disengage from Kanga. They're still holding the bush. A lot of posturing from both sides. Nobody's confident enough to engage. They know that Renata Bailout is there, they know the Milia ult is there, so you sort of have to bait out these abilities first before you commit to a proper team fight. 
And uh, that's one teleport down for Kanga, but the advantage is uh, they have two. Whereas Zion have only one with the Rumble Ignite, so it hasn't really changed the game plan for Kanga. I think they're still okay, but definitely on the back foot in terms of vision on Baron. Let's see then, with Foreigner clearing out the vision, all three wards in the Baron area, you're not really looking at too much uh, understanding as to what is going on. A nice one point outside the Baron pit, but still one inside. They know exactly what is going on here from Ion. Invictus waiting out of vision, out of sight and out of mind as the other three looks to try and group up inside the entry point. A two-man ultimate layer beautifully there with the equalizer. So Joby tries to go absolutely crazy with it. He's one and five, but it doesn't seem to care. He's jumped on back, and the Baron is only now just dropped. There goes Joby, still tanking up the world, but never been forced to flash away, receive the shield, and live to fight another day. A 5 0 Rumble finds another, and the Super Mega Death Rocket does not find its reset. Yeah, and that fight just came down to Rhea Fury thinking too long about his teleport. Might oh. not be over though. Far enough. Just gets his base cancelled. No Baron here to pick up for Ion, so it's just a couple of consolation kills. Uh, and most importantly, Nico did stay for Flash. So there's that tool available, uh, whereas uh, the Jinx has lost hers. So the next team fight could be crucial for Kanga. But that fight was pretty much just 4v5. You see, uh, Reef here, he's pushing the Bob Wave. He really just needs to go in as soon as he sees the Maokai Oil. He needs to channel his teleport, but he doesn't. And this teleport is still not being channeled. Now it's being channeled, but Kurek's already dead. Everybody's disengaged, and uh, Reef here, he's in Narnia. Uh, not sure how he survives here, but he does. And the fight just kind of phases out. Nothing to get here for Kanga. Yeah, also a TP that's found little to no value, right? You pop a clone, you walk away and say, that was my job well done. But once again, we've talked about just how strong uh, this Nico has been and the ultimate being up and available certainly can cause a few problems if I and R groups up like they have been. Looking to try and rally behind the Maokai, for instance, and there is no Breath of Life available for the Milio. There is no cleanse. They are in a world of trouble. Not going to be deterred, though. They are going to try for it once again and with a another Dragon spawning, Dragon number five, up in less than a minute. It's a yep. question of, will we be doing a trade here for the Baron, or will we all in on this one objective down south? Yeah, that's what we were talking about with the Jinx range. You know, they're comfortably getting mid prior now for these objectives in the in the mid to late game. And and uh, importantly as well, look at Yearn items. He's got a QSS, so that adds a lot of kill pressure on the sidelines. Ryu Fury not able to just E him and run away anymore. Uh, definitely has to be a lot more cautious when, when playing that 1v1. Yes, it does. But I've never been so scared of a 1-on-5 champion. It feels like we've really hit that sort of solo queue point of an 0-10 Yasuo just being an absolute terror in this game. Could single-handedly uh, win or lose you this game. Yep. Uh, it's been causing a lot of oh, pressure. Really As I said, uh, out goes the one boss and there is the Nature's Grass. We're going to try and lock down as many members as possible in this mid lane. One man ultimate onto Invictus coming out of Dorymon. Not enough to try and get the kill, but in comes Jovi with that TP looking to go for the one man ult onto Reef. You'll remove that mid lane assassin and say, I need my vengeance for an awful mid lane performance. Out goes the clone, it does not matter because Nibbit has found his first kill. There becomes the double kill, the bot slow, and Kurak is now lined up in his sight for shield as that a handshake forward and Kurak shreds him down. No bailout, no denial. It's a triple kill for Jinx. It's a Baron on the menu. Yeah, triple kill for Jinx, Gimme, and this game is just completely in Ion's control now. Uh, they've hit the late game, they've hit the item spikes. And now they get a free Baron. Jovi's not done yet. He wants more. He oh, says, wow. we know you'll go for this dragon. We know you're not going to check this bush. I can Cheeky. snipe something. He's sneaking behind them. I dare say he'll face check them as well. Oh. Oh, in Wrong their bush, face. Mate. They're not looking. Are they in the shop? Oh, no. <laughs> wow, well, that's very unlucky, but it's very, very good play from, from Jovi. Um, you know, understanding that he doesn't need to commit himself as a resource to Baron, it's already secured, and he's trying to get even more on the other side, make sure that there's no sneaky uh, dragon takes happening, and uh, we've got the replay here. So a solo one-man ult on Rumble, it, it can work, but it really needs to be his whole team committed. You know, the Varus ult needs to follow up here, but Varus was charging his Q there, so Doramon gets to live. The Renata ult, very mediocre, just hits the Rumble. And uh, Rear Fury, no ult, no life. Very hard to survive. Uh, gets a good Zonya's off, but then the perfectly timed Jinx rocket from Nebula takes him down, and once that Jinx gets a single reset, the rest of the fight is just run away if you're Kanga. Yeah, it was a very awkward fight for Kanga, wasn't it? I mean, you see Rufio going for the one man ult, instantly gets cleansed out by the Milio, and then after that, you're thinking, well, what's your next step? You've kind of exhausted your, your potential here, maybe hard forcing a fight that wasn't really ideal. The consequence has been that you've lost all these members, you've lost the Dragon, you've lost the Baron, and you've granted Ion an even stronger sort of mid to late game position. 
Yeah, I'm sorry to say this, Gimme, but uh, Reeve Fury have, um, Kanga have two CC combo. They've got the Nico ult, and they've got the Varus ult, and now Amelia has a uh, his ult and the Mikhail's. So how do you get picks now? You've got two cleanses. Three, if you count the QSS, uh, you just these champions will never stand in one spot and let you kill them. Yeah, QSS, Cleanse, Summoner, all those abilities familiar themselves. I mean, yeah, as you quite rightly say, your champion has pretty much been invalidated. Drop two ultimates, zone them away from the tower. You can have lethality, but you aren't doing much. Oh. Nice shield, nice try, no bailout, no chance to survive. And Ion have been given a sniff of blood, a, a sense of urgency that we're just far too strong. You've had your fun in the early game, but late game is where we shine. Yeah, and the Crypto Bloom explosion at the end, love to see that. Um, very pretty, very very satisfying when, when you get Crypto Bloom as a mage on the Rumble. And I think this is just the beginning of the end, Skimmy. They're knocking down the door of the second inhibitor. There's really no engage for Kanga. Just have to sit and watch while their base falls to pieces. That certainly does. So easy for them to take down these structures as well, given they have all six stacks of the Void Grubs. Two inhibitors claimed. All the Void might spawning and just basically creating a second army bolstered by the Baron buff. It's, yeah, as you say, very, very hard to try and contend with. And really, this is now Ion's game to lose. 100%, yeah, you made a good point. The, the Void Grubs now paying off, definitely in these sieges, uh, making it much faster. Um, to take down these towers, and also, even if your wave dies, right, you've got an extra couple of shots that the Void Grubs uh, can, little Voidlings can, can tank for you, so... Seems like Ion's plan to play for Void Grubs has, has worked out. They've played for Void Grubs, they've uh, reached the late game, they have multiple cleanses, they outrange. It's, uh, yeah, it's checkmate. But that's my favorite word, my favorite term, right, is looking to try and find your way into a checkmate position, and it certainly feels like that in terms of the inhibitors, the base, uh, the fact that you're having to try and cosplay as a minion to hope that somebody goes for a face check, it's just not going to happen at this point of the game, right? You've had your chance to try and snowball with all this wombo combo lethality, but um, it's not really blossomed into much more than that. So we'll be keeping our eyes on the cleanse, the QSSs, and everything else, because I feel like it's as simple as them just grouping up bot lane, dropping an equalizer and a nature's grasp again, and saying, you're zoned from that tower, there's your second one, now you find yourself stuck in the, in the base, waiting for game two. Yeah, that's it, Skimmy. They just need to play uh, two lanes, really just put four people bot, um, one person mid to sort of threaten threaten the flank, threaten the end, and just comfortably hit this tower and close out this game. But Kanga, they still have a chance. We do have the, the flash on the, uh, Nico. We've got the flash on Reela as well. Here we go. We've already found a moment to strike. Kurek is the target, and Kurek is the kill. In and out. In a flash really there for Jovi. Blink, and you will miss it. In goes Rila, or rather Refury going Ooh. for a one-man kill, but he's going to get traded out by the Storm Surge from the Afterlife. They did get Dream on. That is who they wanted. No perfect KDA for him today. But the price is that your base has now been completely annihilated. Not a single inhibitor left standing. And now you have a very exposed core. Yeah, and that's the story of this game. Give me, they keep getting one nice pick off, but just run out of steam to kill the rest of the champions. There's so much threat here on the side of Ion, the Yone. The Rumble, the Jinx, all carries in their own respect. And uh, they've executed beautifully to get this win. Yeah, they certainly will be. Zone back to the fountain is where they'll find themselves the remainder of this game. One last chance to dance inside the Nexus, but at 33 minutes, Iron bring it all the way to a close. What a fantastic game one to turn, um, really, what was a bit of a dire early game into a very commanding mid to late. Yeah, they look calm, collected, uh, confident for game two, I would say. So we'll see what Kanga. Uh, decides to change when it comes to, to the draft, perhaps, uh, because it did feel like they were on a time of this game, and that's what it that's what ended up costing them. It certainly did. Iron currently taking the lead. We're we'll on to a quick break, and we return. It's game two to see if they can take all 